soul of the Lord. Praise Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good morning, everyone, and a happy St. Patrick's Day to everyone. As you can see, I have a slideshow for our homily this morning, and the title of the homily, It is Good for Us to Be Here, which obviously echo the words that St. Peter just said to Jesus when they were there on Mount Tabor in the moment of the Transfiguration. It's also good for all of us to be here, to be here at St. Elizabeth's in Wyckoff, New Jersey, to be here this Sunday morning to celebrate this Mass together as a community. And building off of what Deacon Andy said uh, last weekend, he spoke about the Pietà, the most famous, really, sculpture in the world that Michelangelo made when he was like 23 or 24 years of age. Beautiful, beautiful uh, statue. When you walk into St. Peter's Basilica, as you walk in, immediately if you turn to your right, this is what you see. And sadly, there's that glass door, I don't know if you can detect it there, but that had to be put in place because in 1970, a crazy guy from Hungary came with a mallet and he smashed up the statue. Um, so since then, it's always been protected. If any of you were old enough to go to the World's Fair in 1964, you were actually able to see the Pieta up close. Or if you were lucky enough, as I was, to be a seminarian in Rome back in 1993, I got to serve Mass for St. John Paul II, and the area where we vest for the Mass in St. Peter's is right in front of the statue. And I just remember putting on all the vestments and just looking up at this most incredible statue. Beautiful, beautiful symbol, obviously, of the devotion of Mary to her son. But I wanted to show you this picture from serving the Mass. So that was uh, 26 years ago, and I was 26 years old at the time, so it's crazy for me to think that that was half my life ago. As you can see in the picture, I had no gray hair, I did not wear glasses, um, but it was on this incredible experience, it's just really by luck, I was one of 11 seminarians to be chosen to serve the Pope's Mass. And there in the background you can see his assistant is there. And as the Pope came by, it was really a very fun moment, uh, my first time ever meeting him. And his assistant was there, and as he went around this little circle of the 11 of us, his assistant whispered to him, oh, this one is from Italy, and he goes, Buon Natale. And then, well, this one is from Spain. He says, oh, Feliz Navidad. And he gets to me, and he says, well, this one is from the United States. And he goes, Merry Christmas. And I <laughs> shook his hand. And then, then, for the life of me, I don't know why I said this. I said, Holy Father, just to explain to you, I'm actually from New Jersey. <laughs> why, why I wanted to specify that New Jersey? And he just looked at me, he's like, Merry Christmas, I guess. I, he, I kind of stumped him. He didn't know how to say it in New Jersey ease or something. But it was a beautiful moment. As I said, it's the biggest church in the world. There with our Holy Father at the time. Really exciting moment uh, for me in the seminary. And really, really loved that moment. And we wear all those special vestments. And as Deacon Andy mentioned last week, we're going to start this three-part series where each of us priests are going to explain a little bit more about the Mass and all the symbolism, all the things that we use. So the first thing that I want to explain is basically how the priests get dressed. As you know, we as priests, we wear very drab uniforms during the day. It's just all black, a little white collar. Uh, but when we get ready for Mass, which is the most important thing we do, we actually get dressed up quite a lot. So the first thing that the priest puts on, which I'm wearing right now, is called the alb. And albus, alba, album from Latin means white. So it's always a white garment. And that actually kind of fits in with today's gospel. When Jesus appeared on the mountain, right, his clothing became dazzlingly white. And so the priest wears that, and it's meant to be a symbol to remind the priest that before you became a priest, you became a Christian. And it's meant to remind the priest of his baptism and when his godmother would have put on him this white garment to symbolize the purity of the child, wiped free from original sin, and then set now as a child of God. So that's the first thing the priest puts on. 
The second thing is known as the cincture. It's kind of like a little rope, a little belt. Um, and that is really a symbol of our commitment to God and obviously our commitment to all of you. We're bound by our vows to God to serve in holiness, to serve right in simplicity of life, in obedience to our bishop, in chastity, celibacy, in our marriage to God, in marriage to the church. And that is always a reminder to us of the commitment that we've made to God and to all of you. The next thing that we put on is known as the stole. And the stole has really evolved over time, but it's meant to be a symbol of Christ. Um, and that symbolism, and I always put it on, I always kiss it first and I put it on, and it reminds me the fact that I act in persona Christi when I exercise my priestly function, in the person of Christ. And as priests, we always put this on when we're doing those things that only a priest can do. When we hear uh, confessions, we give absolution, et cetera, et cetera. And as I always tell the kids in CCD, it's like, when I put the stole on, then I'm like Father Stephen, and I'm fully in my role. I take the stole off, and I'm just Stephen, right? Just another uh, Christian among us. But the stole is that great symbol of there. The next thing that we put on is the kasuya, or the chasuble, right? And the chasuble uh, looks like a little bit the word in Spanish for house. Mi casa, tu casa, right? You've heard all those things. Chasuble just basically means like a little house, like a little tent. And it's an outward garment that the priest wears. And as you see, there are four main colors. The colors we wear during this season, during Lent, and also during Advent, are these kind of purple, violet colors. Right, are meant to be colors of expectation. The green is the color that you see the most often, and that's in honor of St. Patrick. No, I'm only kidding you. See if you're still listening. Now that's for what we call ordinary time, and that's the color you see most frequently. Then the red is actually to symbolize either the Holy Spirit at Pentecost, but most frequently whenever kind of blood is involved. So Good Friday we wear the red, Right? We wear the red on the feast day of different saints who shed their blood as martyrs for the faith. And then the last color, the again, the bright and happy color, the white and the gold color of the vestments is to symbolize the joy and the happiness. So that's what we wear during the Christmas season and during the Easter season. So you see, as priests, we get really dressed up for Mass, and each thing has a symbol. The thing I want to explain to all of you for you coming to church, right? It's a special occasion, a special moment. And I find that as a country, as a church in this country, we've become a lot more relaxed. If any of you are old enough to remember like wearing your Sunday best to church. When I used to work with the gangs in Patterson, I used to be really amazed, even in the poorest neighborhoods in Patterson. If you go there on a Sunday morning, poor as the place is, and everyone gets really dressed up to come to church, really get dressed up. So I asked Father Carlos if I could get a picture of him as a little boy and how he and Colombia were dressed up for his family. You're gonna love this picture. <laughs> now that's Father Carlos there in the far corner over there. No, I'm only kidding you, that's obviously not. That's back from the 1800s. Um, but those ways obviously are generational, right? And I know I'm probably speaking to the choir here because there's not as many young kids. But I often find the older parishioners will get kind of more dressed up and you go down the line, right? Kids are then coming in shorts and sweatpants. And as priests, we often talk about this. Like we don't want to say to people, like you have to wear your Sunday best, right? Because we're just happy that people are in church, right? And so if you come to church and you're wearing your flip-flops and your shorts, we love that you're here. If you could come to church and you could be a little bit more dressed up, right, we'd be even happier, right, to wear a jacket or a tie or whatever it is, the things to do. So next week, I'd love to see all of you come to church with these outfits on. That would really make me very, very happy. But we do it to mark that what we're doing here at church is really the highlight of the week because it's the moment when we get to receive Jesus in Holy Communion. And so when we come into church, the very first thing that we do is we dip our hands in the holy water font. And again, this is meant to be a reminder to us that we've been baptized into the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus. 
And so it's a great moment. I think many of us, I know I do it many times, just very out of routine and really don't think about it. But it's meant to be a moment where we pause and think that I belong to Christ. My entire life is wrapped up in this wonderful mystery of Christ among us. So we do that, and then we come into the church and we genuflect. Genuflect, genu in Latin means knee, flectare means to bend. So genuflection means a bending of the knee. And we do that because we recognize that Jesus is truly present in the Eucharist, right? This is Jesus, body, blood, soul, and divinity. Jesus is really present. So we say we're not just coming into a hall. We're not just going into a meeting place. We're coming into God's house. So we genuflect. Now, some people can't genuflect, right, because their knees are bad. Father Vincent can't genuflect because he's got his two artificial hips on him, right? He can't do that. So what does he do? He makes a profound bow. If your back is bad and you can't make a profound bow, then just nod your head. If your neck is bad and you can't bend your, bow your head, then, I don't know, blink your eyes or do something. <laughs> but something that shows that we recognize we're in a holy place and we recognize that you, Jesus, are here. And for the young people among us, right, unless there's something wrong with your knees, you should get into that practice now to recognize that Jesus is truly present. And then obviously the next thing we do, we gather as a community, we have our opening song, our opening prayer, which we begin right in the sign of the cross, in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. And again, I think it's something that we many times take for granted. But think about that symbol that we're making over our body. We're making this symbol of Christ on the cross. And I always love that little prayer card. I saw it many years ago. I haven't seen it since. And the prayer card said, you know, I asked Jesus, how much do you love me? And he stretched out his arms and he said, I love you this much. And then his arms are nailed to the cross. So the sign of the cross is a wonderful symbol of how much Jesus loves us. And we show him how much we love him by being present, by appreciating his sacrifice on the cross. And then obviously today in honor of St. Patrick, I put a little shamrock right, because we are always recognizing the Holy Trinity whenever we make the sign of the cross, and we say, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. And it truly is good for us to be here in church. But I just want to go back now to Rome. Back to Rome. Final slide here. When the Midnight Mass, this was December 24th, 1993, Pope was strong, it was Midnight Mass. Mass lasted like four hours. When it was over, we each got to meet the Pope one more time. And if you see my left hand, I'm actually clenching a rosary that he gave me. Blessed rosary, wonderful gift. Um, and it was so funny, I, I had no idea he was going to do this, but you can see the other seminarians laughing. When he gave it to me, he then goes, ha, 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 New Jersey, ha, ha, ha New Jersey. So anyway, I guess I made a little impression on him, but... May we all know that it truly is good for us to be here in New Jersey, to be here in Mycroft, to be here at St. Elizabeth's, to be here to worship our Almighty God, to give Him our praise and our love, because the holiest thing we can do in our week, the holiest thing we do in our life, is to be here at Mass. Amen. Yeah.